Measuring inequality. How can we know how unequal is the distribution of income in a country? First, a definition. Economic inequality refers to the degree of variance in incomes amongst the households in an economy. So here's an illustration. We have two countries. Each country has five households. Now, we can look at the incomes of the households in these two countries and see that the distribution of income in one country is more unequal. There's greater variation than the distribution of income in the other country. But in, a, in an actual country with hundreds of thousands or millions of households, then we can't always eyeball a histogram and you know, have a look at inequality. So the question we want to answer here is, how do we actually measure the degree of inequality in an economy? We're going to use this graph to begin with that on the horizontal axis shows percentiles of households and on the vertical axis percentiles of income and what we want to reflect is what share of income is earned by each percentile of households so for simplicity, let us pretend that we have an economy that has only three households. The poorest household has an annual income of $200. The middle income household has income of $300. And the wealthy household has income of $500. So total national income is a thousand dollars so we can say that one third of the households earns 20 percent of the income let us plot that point and then two-thirds of the households the poorest two-thirds earns half the income we plot that point and of course 100% of the households will earn all the income. If we connect those points, we get a line that is called a Lorenz curve, named after Max Lorenz, who was an American economist uh, around about 1905. The Lorenz curve gives us a representation of the degree of inequality. We're going to illustrate this by changing the distribution of income and seeing what it does to this Lorenz curve. Let us take $100 of income from the poorest household and have that $100 be earned instead by the wealthiest household. And then we plot anew the Lorenz curve for this economy. The poorest third of households now earns only 10% of the income. The poorest two thirds earns 40% of the income. The new Lorenz curve representing more inequality is further away from the diagonal than was the Lorenz curve we had before. So we see that the greater the degree of inequality, the further away from the diagonal is the Lorenz curve. Here's the Lorenz curve for Denmark. Denmark has one of the most equal distributions of income in the world. At the other end of that spectrum is Namibia, which is one of the more unequal. 
and we see it reflected in in how far the Lorentz curve for Namibia diverts away from the diagonal compared to Denmark. We can capture that by noting that the poorest 80% of households in Denmark earn as much as 64% of the income. Whereas the poorest 80% of households in Namibia earn only 20% of the income. Of course, if we weren't using uh, quintiles, like one fifth or one thirds, then we would get a smooth Lorentz curve if we were representing percentiles or each household individually. So a realistic Lorentz curve with a sufficient number of data points would look smooth like the one we have here. But we still have only a visual representation. We still have to look at the Lorentz curve, perhaps compare it to the Lorentz curve for other economies to see how unequal is the distribution of income. But what we want is a measure. And for this, we can thank Corrado Gini, an Italian statistician, uh, around seven years after Max Lorenz came up with his curve. If the degree to which the Lorenz curve deviates from the diagonal is correlated with the degree of inequality, then that area between the diagonal and the Lorentz curve is a measure of inequality. And the Gini coefficient is based on that measure. It is based on that area. But we can't use the absolute value of the area because then that would depend on the scale of the graph. If we draw it on a huge piece of paper, we'll get a bigger number. So it is actually the area between the diagonal and the Lorentz curve, let's call that A, relative to the area of the triangle bounded by the diagonal and the axes, which is A plus B. So it is the relative size of A that is the measure of inequality called the Gini coefficient. The Gini coefficient varies from zero to one. In the extreme case of there being perfect equality, every household earns exactly the same. So say 73% of the households will earn 73% of the national income. Then the Lorentz curve is coincident with the diagonal. The area A collapses and the Gini coefficient is zero. Perfect equality yields a Gini coefficient of zero. At the other extreme, At the other end, before we get to the extreme, if we have a distribution that looks like what we had in our example of only three households, we'll get a Gini coefficient of around 0.3. At the other extreme, if we have perfect inequality, that all the households except for one earn nothing, and one household earns all of the income, then the Gini coefficient turns out to be one. Going back to our comparison of Denmark and Namibia, Denmark's Gini coefficient is 0.74 and Namibia's is 0.25. Here's a random sampling of Gini coefficients from around the world just to give you an idea of what is the actual range that we might observe. So we have our measure 
of inequality. The problem though is that the Gini coefficient is actually quite complex to calculate for a real economy. So most people resort to quicker and dirtier ways of representing the degree of inequality. Here are a few of them. The share of total income earned by particular percentages. So we can look at the share of income earned by the top 20% of the population. That's a measure of inequality, a rough measure of inequality, because the greater is that percentage, then the more inequality that exists. A lot of popular literature focuses on the share of income earned by the top 1%. We could also make the same calculation at the other end. Share of income earned by the bottom 40%. The lower that is, the more inequality there is going to be in, in the country. And then we can take the relative shares of those two groups at the end. So if we compare the share earned by the highest quintile, the highest fifth, compared to that earned by the lowest quintile, then that too is a kind of measure of inequality. These are not perfect measures. Their advantage is that they are easy to identify with and easy to calculate. Because it doesn't tell you, none of these measures that focus on the bottom so much percent or the top so much percent tell you what is happening to the entire distribution. It really is taking only one point on the Lorentz curve and interpreting that. The advantage of the Gini coefficient is that it represents inequality across the entire income distribution. So it is more accurate. But these quick and dirty measures are more popular. Now that we have answered our question about how we measure inequality, we can take on another question, which is the relationship between inequality and poverty. In a lot of discussion, people speak about inequality and poverty as if they are synonymous. That the society needs to address inequality and poverty. So let us explore the relationship between these two. First, poverty is a condition in which the basic provisions of livelihood are not attainable by a household. Poverty is measured by establishing a poverty line. The poverty line is a calculation of how much income is needed by a household to meet basic provisions. And it is defined specifically what basic provisions are, which is what is what is the size of the housing that is needed? What is the caloric intake required for the members of the household? And so on. So whatever those basic provisions of food and shelter, then a calculation is made of the income needed to provide it for the household. Then we simply compare all household incomes to that poverty line level of income. And whatever percentage of the economy's households, their income falls below that poverty line, that is the incidence of poverty. That is the poverty rate. The percentage of households with incomes less than the poverty line. So that we have our definition of poverty and we have our definition of inequality, then we can explore the relationship between the two. Here are our two countries again, uh, one more unequal than the other. And let's establish a poverty line of $240 of income. Poverty and inequality are sometimes aligned. 
in this case, we see that with that poverty line, the more unequal country, blue country, has a higher poverty rate. 40% of the households are poor in unequal blue country, but only 20% of the households are below the poverty line in more equal green country. But suppose we had instead picked a poverty line of $280, then both countries would have the same poverty rate. Both countries have 40% of their households below the poverty line, even though one is clearly more unequal than the other. So sometimes the two are aligned and sometimes not. This, this divergence between poverty and inequality is even more stark in a growing economy because growth usually has different effects on inequality and poverty. If growth is evenly spread in terms of its impact on the income distribution, then economic growth invariably reduces poverty. As all households become richer, more households rise above the poverty line. But that doesn't do anything for inequality. If growth is evenly spread, then inequality is going to be the same as poverty declines. And in practice, it's actually often worse than that. Because historically, economic growth often worsens inequality. Because those at the higher end of the income distribution are able to take greater advantage of the opportunities created by economic growth. Even though all incomes are rising, incomes at the top are rising faster. So we end up with a situation as is exemplified by the economic growth in China over the last quarter century, we end up with a situation where even though poverty is declining and sometimes dramatically and impressively, inequality is worsening. Inequality is measured by the Gini coefficient and also by the shares of income earned by each population percentile. So, now we know how inequality can be measured.